Hi friends, welcome to biologyexamsforit.com. Today's video is a humble attempt to explain a very interesting topic. At the same time, a challenging topic, electron transport chain in cellular respiration. At the end of the video, hopefully you will be able to understand definition of electron transport chain, which is the exact site of electron transport chain. What is the fate of NADH and FADH2 that is formed during Krebs cycle? And finally, how ATP is formed in electron transport chain. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and support this channel. Let's begin with the definition of electron transport chain. Electron transport chain is the step-by-step -step transfer of high energy electrons through a series of electron carriers or through a chain of electron carriers that is located in multi-enzyme complexes, finally reducing molecular oxygen to water with the formation of ATP by a process called chemiosmosis. So we have given a detailed video on first two phases of cellular respiration, glycolysis and Krebs cycle. You can refer that also as a background information. Let's move into the detail. So the exact site of electron transport chain, the understanding is very important in understanding electron transport chain. I often ask my students to imagine mitochondria as a big room with different compartments. As you can see, this is mitochondria. So this is an enlarged view of mitochondria. Glycolysis takes place in cytosol or mitochondrial matrix is a site of Krebs cycle, whereas electron transport chain occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane, which is folded or which is called as cristae. The site of electron transport chain is inner mitochondrial membrane. So this is actually what is happening. This is the inner mitochondrial membrane. You can see the protein complexes here. ATP synthase is also located on the inner mitochondrial membrane. And proton grid information, proton is pumped from the matrix side to the inner membrane space, the space between these inner membrane and outer membrane is called as inner membrane space. So gradient develops in inner membrane space. So proton movement occurs from matrix to inner membrane space. And finally, as you can see, ATP synthase is oriented towards the matrix side, forming ATP. ATP synthesis is happening towards the matrix side of mitochondria. Now moving into the detail of how ATP is synthesized during the process. You don't have to worry about this picture. We will be dividing it into many steps for a better understanding. So this is the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane. All the protein complexes along with ATP synthase is located on the inner mitochondrial membrane. And this, the space between these two is called the inner membrane space. Now there are four complexes, namely NADH dehydrogenase, the first complex, then succinate dehydrogenase, the second complex, which is also involved in Krebs cycle, an enzyme that is attached to the inner mitochondrial membrane that is involved in the conversion of succinate to fumarate. Then there is complex 3, which is cytochrome BC1, and the complex 4, cytochrome C oxidase from where electrons are moved to oxygen and oxygen is reduced forming water. Point number one, there are four complexes that is located in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Complex one, two, three and four along with ATP synthase. Now electron transport chain and chemiosmosis or formation of ATP, we can divide it into three steps. First step is electron flow and associated energy release. Second step is proton movement and gradient formation. And finally, PMF driven ATP synthesis or proton driven ATP synthesis. So let's move into the step one. Before that, we should know that at the end of Krebs cycle, we have just six ATP that can be directly used. So majority of ATP close to 30 ATP is synthesized by electron transport chain using this NADH and FADH2 that is formed during glycolysis and Krebs cycle. So what is the fate of this NADH and FADH2? These 
two molecules acts as electron turners in electron transport chain. NADH dissociates forming NAD plus and H and hydrogen give rise to electrons and protons. Hydrogen give rise to electrons and protons. This understanding is very important in understanding the concept. So the movement of electrons from NADH is from complex 1 through different electron carriers like FM and FES then to complex 3 and complex 4. Whereas FADH2 movement is from complex 2, 3 and 4. In other words, FADH2 directly enters into complex 2 or succinate dehydrogenase complex. So NADH contributes electrons to complex 1 that moves to different electron carriers like FM and FES etc. Then quinone and then finally it reaches cytochrome C oxidase or complex 4. Their electron is received by oxygen forming water. This is happening with NADH. In the case of FADH2, it starts with complex 2, electrons moves through complex 3 and 4, finally forming water by reducing oxygen. So this is the movement of electron. Let me repeat once more. The movement of electron as far as NADH is concerned, it is through 1, 3 and 4. Whereas in the case of FADH2, electrons moves from 2, 3 and 4 complex and finally reducing oxygen to form water. So terminal electron acceptor is oxygen. Hope this much is clear. Point number 2. These are high energy electrons. During this electron flow, energy is released. This is a downhill process. So that energy released by the flow of electron is used to pump H plus from matrix side to the intermembrane space of mitochondria. That is called the proton movement. So proton is transferred from the mitochondrial matrix side towards the intermembrane space using the energy that is released by electron flow. There are different proton channels in these protein complexes, especially cytochromes. This creates a gradient across this inner membrane. As you can see, the number of protons or H plus in intermembrane space increases, whereas the number of protons in matrix side decreases. This is called gradient or difference in number of protons. So there is a natural tendency to move back and to make an equilibrium. H plus tries to move back and to make an equilibrium. So suppose here it is 10, here it is 2, that is called as gradient. So there should be a balance. When H plus tries to move, there is a problem. This membrane is hydrophobic, will not allow H plus to move into the matrix. The only way out is ATP synthase, which is a protein complex, an amazing protein complex that is involved in ATP synthesis. So once the proton moves through this ATP synthase, it is having a head region which is a catalytic site and F0 region that is embedded in the membrane. So once protons moves through this, that drives, that gives a force, this catalytic site has both sites for ADP and PI and this comes in close proximity and finally forming bond to form ATP. So let me repeat once more. So a proton gradient is created using the energy released by electron flow and then this proton tries to move into the matrix. The only way out is ATP synthase. While the proton moves through ATP synthase, that proton motive force, that energy is used to bond ADP and PI to form ATP. So this is what is actually happening during chemiosmosis. And this great information and associated ATP synthesis is called as chemiosmosis proposed by Peter Mitchell. Let me repeat the entire process once more. In electron transport chain, first thing that is happening is electron flow. Electron flows from NADH and FADH2 
through different protein complexes or electron carriers in the complexes and ultimately reducing molecular oxygen to water. During the electron flow energy is released and that energy is used to pump proton from matrix side to the intermembrane space. This creates a gradient or imbalance in number of protons on either side of the membrane. Then protons tries to move back. The only way out is ATP synthase, which is a protein complex. So once the proton moves through ATP synthase, ADP and PI combines to form ATP by chemiosmosis.